So it's 3.20.12 and I'm here on my swing in my front yard but a Bigfoot song. Yahi hey yahi hey yahi hum yahi hey yahi hey yahi hum. Oh, I want people to know, and I've said this a lot of times, that the internet is becoming humanity's consciousness it's becoming their memory and i've been saying it for a long time that what's happening is we're moving to how we communicate now with like skype and iphones and all that we're not going to need those machines we're going to just be able to do it this is coming and i see bits of it a lot like um I had a friend here, and she was sitting right here where I was, without a computer, and I was inside, and I posted on my Facebook that I needed to do something. What was it? I needed to start on those on those um, raised beds over there, and um, sh um. She was sitting here and she said, right as soon as I posted that, when are you going to start on those raised beds? And it wasn't the first time she had done that. And there, I'm finding so many people who are like connected, especially people who are on the internet. They, um, they are tuned in and less and less they're not needing the internet to be connected into it. It's a consciousness, and if you're like used to it, like if you Facebook a lot, you start to be able to do it without actually being on Facebook. You can be away from a computer, and you'll still get this this thought, someone of thinking of you, and they'll have put it on, they'll have posted on your wall or sent you a message on Facebook. Um, and and YouTube is our memory. That's we're putting ourselves, we're putting our lives, we're putting our talent, our soul into videos and we're we putting them on the internet <clears throat> and that's the memory of us and people in the future can go back and look at our memories. It's powerful, cool shit. So, so I hope I get to speak at VidCon. Um, they're going to give me a... Uh, a room and meals for me and my kids. And I also think that my cousin who works at Disneyland is going to get us free um, uh, tickets to Disneyland for me and my kids. So, oh my God, this seems like this is going to be fun. We get a room at the Hilton in Anaheim and we have free tickets to Disneyland and we can go to VidCon and get VIP treatment, m meals and booze. Both my kids are over age. This seems like this is going to be fun. Oh my God. Right? Right? And I don't know who all you know that has seen me at VidCon last year. I videotaped the whole thing. But it was powerful. It was powerful shit. One of the highlights of my life where, you know, the Gregory Brothers... Who did the double rainbow song? Um, closed the concert on Friday night, the first the first night, and um, you know many bands, and they closed the the concert. They were the last band, and they closed their set with the double rainbow song. Everyone is in a good mood. Everyone is jazzed. They're having a good time. Everyone knows the Double Rainbow song. And it, even though they made a special song just for that night. And they, the Gregory Brothers sang this song. And then they stopped singing and just played the music. And the people sang. My words. 
holy shit and i'm standing there on the side of the audience and i have a friend who's videotaping me and videotaping what's going on and i have two cameras and i'm videotaping with two cameras in the air and they are singing my words and i'm watching and i'm going holy shit man this is crazy and then they get everyone all riled up. They're singing the song. They're dancing and jumping up and down. And then they bring me on stage. Oh, my God. And they go crazy. And I'm not entertaining. I'm not singing. I'm not dancing. I'm just walking out there. I just walk out. And the people go crazy. And I'm going... What does this mean? It was amazing. They, people were just loving me. For what? I didn't do anything. I just... I just saw God. And I put it on YouTube. And... Uh, it's powerful what it's done. You know... When... When I, when I was out here and that rainbow was here, it was all the way across the sky, full on double rainbow. And it looked like a giant eye. And I had just finished writing this email saying how I felt like, no, like I was Noah, who was a prophet of God, who saw a rainbow. And I've been saying this stuff about alternative energy and food and community for a long time. And 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 that's kinda like Noah, and that's what I said. I felt like I was Noah and my house fills with color and I go outside and there's this double rainbow in my front yard, oh my god. And it looks like a giant eyeball. And I'm like only God can have an eyeball that big. God is right here looking at me. Because I just said that I felt like I was a prophet of God. And um, it was so powerful. There was a big tree right here and I couldn't see all of it. But when I got out there and I saw the full thing as a fool it looked like a giant eyeball and I said God is right there in front of me and I fell down and I started crying and I didn't care what was going to be said because I'm thinking oh I just got to record this thing and the audio doesn't matter I'll switch put a song or something and so I just let it flow you know and I live here out in the middle of nowhere and no one can hear me I'm by myself and I'm not high. I'm just, you know, I've been, I was working on the emails and stuff like that. And, um, I had to say, what does it mean? Because it was so powerful. It was so beautiful. And it was so bright. And I knew that I was in the presence of God. And, um, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I had, to, I had to ask, what does it do? I said, please help me. Tell me what it means. And uh, I knew it meant something. I knew it was going to be a viral video. I knew it was going to, I knew it was so powerful. I knew it was so amazing that it was going to, it was going to be huge. I knew it. I felt it right away. And, and then I shot it and I uploaded it and I said to everyone, send this to everyone you know because this is going to be a viral video. And, um, you know, that whole Jimmy Kimmel thing, I made that happen. Uh, I, um, I saw every little step and I didn't know why I was doing it. I just felt that I needed to and I made it all happen, you know, I, I, I got Jimmy's attention and when I went to get his when I went to see him and he liked me and the announcer guy called me his boyfriend and I 
I came back with a shirt that said Jimmy's boyfriend, and I knew that what it was going to do, what it did, get their attention, and they were going to like it, and they did, and it worked, and he put me in the monologue. And I had set that up on my DVR to record that because I was going to be there and I was going to try and get on stage, or at least uh, on camera, and I did, and it worked. And I put it on my DVR and I recorded it with my camera and I uploaded it to YouTube. And, and I connected it to my channel and someone who watches, who looks in the internet for stuff for Jimmy, saw it. He saw the he saw the video of me on Jimmy's show, and then he looked at my other videos, and the Double Rainbow video was there, and he saw it for its genius, and he showed it to Jimmy, and Jimmy agreed. <laughs> this is amazing. He gave me video of the year, um, and he had me on his show lots of times, and I read his mind on live national TV, the part about the mirror. I guessed it was a mirror before I even knew he had a box. So, that was spirit. Why did Jimmy have a mirror for me? And why did I say, I think it's a mirror? There you go. Because spirit made it all, made it all happen. It was powerful shit. It was my destiny. And the song coming, you know, what, four days after I started going viral. And then it blew up. And, um... It's like made it more powerful, and um, people started right away started recognizing the power of this of this thing that I saw, that I experienced, and that I shared. Microsoft, Jimmy Kimmel, Tosh.0, Good Morning America, CNN, Nightline, and on and on and on and on. People started inviting me all over the world and said we'll pay or we'll pay you money to come and, and it, in the beginning it was really fun and exciting but in the very very beginning I, I had been alone on this mountain for so long that I had forgotten how to function in society and I was like a baby in the city I lost my wallet I lost my backpack and and I needed all that. I had my ID and all my money and my phone. Oh, I didn't even have a phone. I didn't have a cell phone. And uh, um, I went to LA to be on Tosh.0. And when I was, while I was going down there, Kimmel called and said, "We want you on the show." And or right before I think that I was going down there. And then this, this TV guys from a radio station came and gave me a ride down to LA. <laughs> <laughs> from Michigan or something. I don't know. Those guys were idiots. But they dropped me off in L.A. And I had forgotten my... I had forgotten my backpack in their car. And it was a pain in the ass. Oh, and here's the thing I've been wanting to say for a long time. Seven days after the video went viral, my training partner and very good friend, a person that I dearly love, Andy Macaron called me and said um, that he would like to meet with me and um, and I said of course you know because he helped me he was my friend he's done a lot for me and he said my brother's a filmmaker in LA and he's here and he'd like to meet you and I'm like bring him up you know and uh, so they came and um, I had a campfire for them and I blew those guys minds I wish you know I told them about some things and I and and they were they were blown away and right when I blew them away a meteor comes across the sky right here and and Andy sees it and he goes holy shit there was a meteor and I looked at him and I said what do you think that means <laughs> so Sam did a documentary of me called um Finding Double Rainbow, and um, he did a great ass job. And uh, you know, I was just working with him the whole time, and you know, he loved me, man. And when I got down to LA, he fucking snatched me up and took care of me. First, I stayed with my sister, and she helped me out. And it was trippy. I didn't have a cell phone, and I had two people working phones dealing deals and talking to reporters and Kimmel and all this shit going on. And um, 
and I'm, you know, I'm like all new at this stuff, and people are just helping me, and Sam snatches me up, and, um, takes so good care of me, I swear, puts me up in his house, you know, and, uh, gives me a room with a shower, feeds me, I didn't have any money, he fucking went to the ATM and handed me 40 bucks, and said, here, and then didn't let me pay for anything, man, and he drove me all around in his car, and he fucking set up, he set up a, the, a meeting with the lawyer, and I got signed with the lawyer right, right away, and then, they set me up with the, um, a meeting with a talent agency, UTA, which was huge. And then they set me up with the reality TV show pitch. And, and Sam went with me because he knows the business. And he fucking made it all happen, man. And he treated me like a god, man. Damn, this sucks. Sam... Is a beautiful human being, man. He's so cool and so funny. I just love that guy, man. He really did a lot for me. And we just had the reality show pitch. He came and he put his talent and energy into the project. And it, he's awesome. And it was awesome. And, and with his brother's help, his brother did like the mechanics. And Sam kind of just like made everything happen for the, for the production. It was really nice having him around. And then in the evenings, he he would party with. So it was so cool. We had so many people here. Sam would come, and it was just like some of the times that I laughed the most, because Sam's fucking crazy and funny, and everyone else was too. And it really just gelled. And you know what? And then we I got to party. Oh, it's Chapin. His girlfriend has a restaurant, El Chavo, in, uh, in in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, and we partied there for free so many times, man. I felt like a king, man. I I love I love Chapin and I love Sam, and I'm grateful to them for the energy and the love that they gave me, man. They treated me like a fucking king. And um, I want them to know that I I appreciate that, and it's made enriched my life with the time that I've spent with them, and that I miss them. And you know, I um, I'd love to do something, come up here and let's work together, or I'll go down there. You know what I mean? It's I'm happy to work with you, man. I love it. I love you guys. Thanks. Yeah. It's cool looking.